Hi, Nicholas. Hi. I'm Sarah Kaizak with Lost in Reviews. Um, we're an online uh, review site, and so we're pleased to talk to you about Drive, which I saw Thursday. Um, kind of a surprising movie for me because I am big into trailers, so I'm the head trailer guru of the website, and the trailer is very good, but I had no indication of the violence that is in this movie. It's kind of surprising. Um, how, how did you approach that? I mean, because the, the beginning of the movie, it's very, like, calm and, you know, serene, and, you know, there's things going on, but then all of a sudden, boom, you know, like, you see someone's head get, you know, shot in. So it, it, was that your idea, or was that how the, the script was written to be like that, or...? No, no, I, I'm, I, um, I like extreme violence, and, <laughs> um, but extreme violence only works if there's a counter. So, you know, um, the book itself is, is a very strange novella about Hollywood. So it was like capturing that kind of momentum and odd feel that the book had. But actually the whole idea of how the film turned out structurally and the sense of mm -hmm. emotions was I had started to read Grimm's fairy tales for my eldest daughter a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And while reading them, I remember thinking to myself, God, it would be interesting to make a movie like a fairy tale, which is very specific in its structure, and it's very, half of it's very fluffy and champagne, it's always about an innocent girl who roams the land and she falls in love with the perfect prince, and it's very, you know, you know, idyllic in terms of how the world is. Mm -hmm. And then when things go dark, it gets very, very dark. And all the fairy tales are very much structured like that in those grim stories. So that's really how it came about, that it was like, I wanted this extreme, explicit violence. And then, at the same time, it had to be as champagne as you can possibly get. So mm -hmm. those two balances would kind of help out each other. Yeah. Um. I wanted to ask you, uh, the thing that struck me about Ryan Gosling's character, which is called Driver, um, was how calm he was throughout the entire movie. Um, even when things got bad, you know, you could see him kind of stressing a little bit, but he was always still very calm. And was that how the character was written, or was that something that you came up with, or Ryan, um, just how, how his character was? Well. I mean, the way it was written was very different. I mean, the way that the book is, is very similar to how he appears on film. Mm -hmm. Let me put it like that. I very much wanted to make the, the book. And Hussein Amini, who's a wonderful writer, had been very good at structuring the book in a more, you know, accessible way mm -hmm. by making a really interesting plot constellation. He's a wonderful writer and a very dear friend, and he and I would then spend a lot of time fetishing the movie into my kind of how I see the world. I'm very much a fetish filmmaker. And that kind of silence, I've always been very, it's I find it much more frightening. Mm -hmm. So every day I would say to Ryan, just keep the energy within. Just keep everything in and do not let it out. So that automatically makes an actor very, very intense to look at because it's all happening from the inside. And by taking his dialogue away, which or most of it, I mean, we would start every morning, Ryan and I, or the other actors or actor, just going through the, you know, what we were supposed to do today. And I said, would well, you want to say this? No, you say that? No, you say this? Said, no. <laughs> In the end, we basically had like, we maybe lost 50% of the dialogue in the final wow. script stages, Haas and I. And then when I started shooting, we lost another 50%. So in the end, there were sometimes only two or three things for the characters to say to each other. And then they were like, well, what's going to happen? I said, you're just going to be looking at each other for a very long time. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you think that's harder for an actor to do rather than have a bunch of lines? Or, I mean, because it seems like you don't have those lines to express that. You really have to show that on your face or in your body language. Well, it, you know, most actors rely on their voices, of course, as a performance piece, understandably. But when you take that away, it's like handicapping an actor in the most extreme sense, and then they have to start using other abilities within them. And that is when 
the great actresses are cut away from the good actresses. Yeah. Because if you're great, you can do that. Then you begin to understand that your eye movement or your physical movement, but it all comes from being truthful. Are you truthful to your character? Then it will show. If you're not, you know within 10 seconds. You can't hide yourself yeah. by using your voice. Yeah. Um, real quick, um, was, do you think the driver was a driver or a stuntman first? I mean, what what do you think came first in his career? Well, I think that the driver in my film very much came from a stunt world, okay. you know, because he came to Hollywood wanting to be in the movies, mm -hmm. and being a stuntman was his way in, in way. to live the illusion of movies, because he clearly a man who is psychotic, and he can't really, doesn't know what reality and reality is not. So he's two people in one person. By night, he's one person. By day, he's another person. Yeah. And Stuntman was definitely what started him. Being a getaway driver was halfway him getting there to his transformation, but there was no ending in his transformation until he finds Irene and the meeting with her, the love story between them and him having to protect her. Yeah forces his final transformation into becoming a superhero, yeah. which is to protect the innocents. Okay. Um, so you really, I mean, think of this as like a superhero type movie? It's very much structured in the sense of the transformation of a superhero in the making. That was kind of like my intention. Yeah. Well, it's very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. If I drive for you, you give me a time and a place. I give you a five minute window. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. So you just moved to LA? No, I've been here for a while. What do you do? I drive for movies. Is that dangerous? It's only part time. You put this kid behind the wheel. There's nothing he can't do. Kid, I want you to meet Mr. Bernie Rose. My hands are a little dirty. So am I. My husband's coming home. Where is he? He's in prison. There's some guys that want me to do a job for him, and I'm not going to do it. What is that you got there? One of those men gave you that? And what's the job? When you get your money, his debt's paid. You never go near his family again. <gasps> Did you have any idea there'd be a second car? He said there would be another car to hold us up. Whose money do I have? I'm going to tell you something. Anybody finds out we're both dead. That's why this driver's got to go, Bernie. He's got to go. Any dreams you have or plans for your future, I think you're going to have to put that on hold. For the rest of your life, you're going to be looking over your shoulder.